Hi, Chris Smith here from Storytelling Schools and today I'm going to tell you a story called Death in a Nutshell. Hope you like it. This is how it goes. Once upon a time, not twice upon a time, not thrice upon a time, but just once. There was a young man who lived in a cottage with his mum by the sea. And they'd do a bit of fishing and they'd grow a few vegetables in the garden and their life was quiet and their life was good. But then time passed and the mum got older and older. And one day she took sick and took to her bed and was lying there with a fever and the boy came in. He said, Mum, you're sick. What can I do? Would you like some soup? He, she said, no, thank you. I'm not hungry. I think maybe my time has come, son. No, he said, don't say that, Mum, don't say that. He went outside to get a breath of fresh air and he saw death coming up the path towards him. He picked up a big stick and he ran at death. He said, no, we don't want you here. You're not welcome here. Leave my mother alone. And he hit death on the head and death fell to the ground and he hit and hit and hit. And the body of death got smaller and smaller and smaller until it was just the size of a little nut. And then the young man picked up death and popped him in half of a nutshell he had, popped the other half of the nutshell on top, did it up with some string, ran down to the sea and threw death out into the ocean. Don't come back, he said. You are not welcome here. And then he went back to his cottage and he went in and there's his mum and she said, ooh, I'm feeling a bit better now. I wouldn't mind some chicken soup. Could you make me some, son? All right, mum, said the son. I'll do that. He went out to the chicken coop. He picked up a chicken. He put the chicken on the block. He got an axe and pop. He chopped the chicken's head off. But then something strange happened. The chicken's head fell to the ground and then whoop, popped back on the neck where it had been. The chicken was still alive. What, said the son? No. Pop. The head fell off and then zoop, it popped back on again. Oh, said the son, that's not going to work. Maybe vegetable soup. He went to the vegetable plot. He pulled up a carrot, zoop, back in the ground. He pulled up a turnip, zoop, back on the ground. Everything he picked returned. It would not die. He went down to the shops in the village. The butcher's was empty. The butcher said, sorry, nothing will die anymore. We don't have any meat for sale. The shops were empty and the people were puzzled. So he went back home and he says, Mum, I saw death coming up the path. I beat him, I popped him in a shell, I tied him inside, I threw him in the sea. But then I, I couldn't make you soup. The chicken wouldn't die and the carrots wouldn't pull. There was no food in the town. And his mum said, oh son, <laughs> I know you want me to live, but there's something that you have to know. Death is part of life. You cannot stop death. We need death at the right time and the right place. If old people like me couldn't die, then we'd live in terrible pain. And as we got older, it would be worse and worse, and we would be sicker and sicker until life would hardly be worth living. Death is part of life. You cannot put death away. Go and let him out. So the son went down the beach, and he walked along the beach, and he looked where the waves met the beach until he came to a place where there was a little nut tied up in string sitting on the sand and he picked it up and he undid the string and pop out came death and the boy said hmm my mum says you're welcome here right said death good to be back see you later and death walked up the path and up to the cottage and by the time the young man had got back there his mother was lying peacefully in her bed dead and the boy was sad, sure he was sad, but also he accepted it. And at the funeral, he made a little speech to everybody who came and said, my mother is gone, I wish she was here, I miss her. But I know, and she knew, that death is part of life, and life is part of death. We have to accept that. That's just how things are. And that, my friends, is the story of death 
in a nutshell. So there we are, there's a little Norwegian story for you. Uh, lots of things you can do with that story. It's full of learning, it's full of ideas, it's full of images, it's full of imagination, and full of one of the biggest questions that we all face, our attitude towards living and dying. Now then, here's a few things, if you like, that you could do with the story. First of all, learn to tell it. Now, you may know us as having our method for learning to tell a story. First of all, you might want to draw a story map like this. Here's my story map. Uh, mother and son living together in a cottage by the sea. She gets sick, she takes to her bed. She doesn't want to eat soup. And then the young man, the son, sees death coming up the path. So he puts him in a nutshell and chucks him in the sea. And then the chicken won't die, the bed won't pull, the butcher shop is empty, so he goes back to his mum and his mum explains that life is part of death and that's okay. And then he finds the nut and he lets death out. And then later at the funeral, he talks about life being part of death and death being part of life. So you can do a little story map like that and make sure you know what the pictures mean so that you can tell it and then you might want to find some physical gestures to help you remember the story so that might be mother and son in a cottage by the sea and then oh no I'm sick no I'm not hungry death boom 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 in the sea with you and then whoop chicken won't die whoop carrot won't pull whoop nothing in the shops and then look son life is part of death death you're welcome here my mum says you're welcome and then at the funeral life is part of death death is part of life so kind of walking through the story like that finding words and gestures to get it deeper in your memory, deeper in your imagination, that's our way. And then tell it to somebody or record it or do what you like. Talk about it. So there's lots to talk about in this story. Uh, see what it triggers for you in terms of ideas, images, anything. Acting it out, if you like. There's some great scenes in this story for drama. Um, Conversations with the mother, conversations with death, what's going on in the son's mind as he's trying to make food and nothing will die anymore. Lots of possibilities for dialogue and also for inner dialogue and soliloquy. Lots of images to paint. What would your figure of death look like? That would be something to think about. Also the scene by the sea, the scenes of the characters, and lots of comedy there you can use in terms of images of trying to create food when nothing will die. Songs and poems, death might have a song, the sun might have a song at the end. Think about poetry for the themes that it's raised. You could do a bit more research. What could we research here? You could research death, find out about it, why it's there, how much of it is there, what we know, what we don't know. Whether you agree with what the mother says about death also what the future will look like, lots of questions about that. Mm, you could write the story, build up the drama, look at the characters, make sure the dilemma is clear, and recycle it. I wonder, this story might be interesting to tell it from Death's point of view. What does Death think? Or from the mother's point of view? You could, um, yeah, you could do it first person with the son's point of view as well. A nice way to get an intense sense of the conflicts that the boy goes through. So here's three, six, eight things you can do with the story. Of course, there's lots more. There's no limit to what you can do with the story. But those are some ideas to get you started. And that, my friends, is my suggestions for what you might do with death in a nutshell.